Covering a president is an interesting thing for a local reporter like me. You get all excited thinking maybe you'll actually have a chance to talk to the president, even though you know it's pretty unlikely. But still, it is a big day. So when I got the assignment to go to the airbase today and help with our live coverage, I was thrilled. Here's a look behind the scenes of what the day was actually like. On my way to the airbase at Portland Airport, I drove along Northeast 33rd near Marine Drive to see what the homeless camp looked like. I've been through here several times, both in my car and on my bike. It's never looked this bad. I heard some campers had been moved off Marine Drive and came here. I don't know if that's true, but the number of vehicles here is incredible. I figured I would talk with the president about this if I got the chance. I arrived at the Air Guard base around 11 a.m. The media check-in time was 11.30. I figured I was right on time. I've been to the base before and it's usually a quick check-in at the security point. They look to see if your name's on a list and sometimes search the car. But with so many people trying to get in at once, it took forever. 20 minutes into the wait, I decided it was time for lunch. It's definitely taken a while. Good time for a sandwich. The only consolation was that I was not alone. But then, in the very important person lane next to me, I started to see political leaders passing quickly through. Just getting a shot of Senator Wyden going by. Pat from KGW, how are you, Senator? First, it was Senator Ron Wyden, <laughs> then Congressman Peter DeFazio, eventually Governor Kate Brown. Governor Brown! After about 35 minutes, I was finally free to go, following that small car, which escorted me and several others behind me to a parking lot. Then it was time to wait some more. I was supposed to do a live report, but that did not seem likely anymore. Reporters mingled with politicians. Lots of police hung out as well. These are just a few of the many people on base with guns to protect the president. And not to be left out, the Coast Guard made a pass overhead. Then I saw Peter Courtney. He's now got his own show. He can tell anybody what he wants. He tells him, this is my opinion. <laughs> Courtney with the glasses is the Senate president for the Oregon legislature. He's joked with me since I first met him 32 years ago. This soldier was in charge of us all. We had to wait until he gave the okay. Eventually, it was time to walk toward the hangar where the president would speak. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. That's Secretary of State Shamia Fagan. Yeah, I'll bet that's that. Impressive. It was amazing to see the armored limousines that carry the president. They were flown in on a huge jet to drive him around in Portland and Seattle. Eventually, the line stopped again. This time, Senator Courtney and I were next to Congressman Earl Blumenauer. You know, the guy had me do fundraisers for him, and he didn't show up. You get up there, it was unbelievable, and he was nowhere to be seen. And I did two of them, and I said, to hell with this. I don't even know the guy. It was pretty fun standing in line with Senator Courtney. He didn't even show up. Eventually, someone called for reporters to come to the front of the line. So we finally got to the check-in table, and then we got credentials that we're supposed to display at all times. They fit on the pinky. Well, the ring finger, anyway. <laughs> it was not great, but it would do. On the other side of the door, police checked each of us for weapons. Inside the hangar, which is a military name for a building that sometimes stores planes, the press area stretched over five long tables that took up much of the room. This is where reporters can sit and write stories and file them, too. Cell service was terrible here, but I think the Internet was probably pretty strong. Of course, the place had a massive American flag and stage lighting, which did make sense because the plan was to open the hangar doors and have the airport in the background. If you're wondering, yes, there are lots of folks with earpieces and walkie-talkies and risers for all the camera crews that cover the president. I found a relaxed feeling inside the hangar because... The president had not landed and would not be speaking for about an hour. Okay, we're almost all the way in. Uh, we're waiting for a press person to come escort me to the other side of this hangar wall. Just on the other side there. That's where I'm supposed to be. It's been quite an ordeal trying to get in here. I think I've missed all my live shots that I'm supposed to do for the station. But, um, you know, we're getting there. Actually, no, I'm not. So instead, I'll report live from inside the hangar and talk about what's going on outside as the president lands. I never did get to see President Biden. I could not stay for the speech. But I did get to see Air Force One from across several parking lots. <laughs> it was quite a day. Let's talk about the visit of the president for a moment. Does it really matter? Does it matter at all that the president spent three or four hours here in Portland? I got to tell you, I'm kind of torn over it. 
Sure, it is great to have the leader of the free world here. It feels like most of the time the real power on the national level is way over on the other side of the country, and we're just kind of a woodsy outpost here. So sure, it is terrific to have any president visit. But in a real specific way, what's in it for us? What did you get from the president's few hours today in Portland? I would argue you got nothing. I know some of our politicians will say it was important for them to make connections with the president or his staff so that when something big happens, they can just pick up the phone and the White House will remember who they are. Maybe they might remember the governor. I doubt it applies to anyone else. For the most part, the president's trip here made money for the Democratic Party when he attended that fundraiser and provided a nice backdrop for a presidential speech. And that's it. Yes, the feds are helping upgrade a runway at PDX, but come on, it's not like the president spent the day there talking with engineers and when it was all done said, okay, let's fund this thing. No, that money is fought for by our congressional delegation and others. They are the ones who are here, at least from time to time, really listening to you in town halls and elsewhere. They matter most on the federal level to us. And if you really want to know who impacts your life, it's your mayor and your local elected officials wherever you live. When the president's gone, our big problems will all still be here with us. And it's the local leaders who will be wrestling with them. You should care way more about your local leaders visiting your local neighborhood than your president visiting your city. That's my opinion. What's yours? You don't have to agree with me. Of course, I think you should. But email me at the story at kgw.com. So the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail 503-226-5090. Thank you for interacting with me.